So here is the scenario. I buy an FPV racing drone and on the first day, I crash it. How do I mitigate crashing? Now I have built drones before and I've also had a DJI Mavic Pro, but these are really easy to fly compared to an FPV racing drone. They require a little bit more skill and a little bit more practice. Now I don't want to go on practicing and destroying drones, so I look towards a flight simulator to help me get that flight time. Here I'm using liftoff, it allows me to use this PC controller to control the drone. But this doesn't really feel very authentic. Now what I really want to do is connect one of my RC radio transmitters to the software so I can use this to give me a better feel and make the practice a little bit more realistic. Now the two I have here both have trainer ports behind the controller which allows me to connect it to a computer. Problem is I don't have that connector and both of them use two different types and I could just go buy one online but that wouldn't be that much fun and this wouldn't be a DIY channel. So the good thing is that both of them have the same type of receiver in a sense that the receivers output the same type of signal since it's a universal signal that most RC receivers use. So my idea is to actually tap into that output signal so I can use any transmitter and receiver setup to connect to the flight simulator software with the added bonus of it being wireless and I'm 100% sure range wouldn't be an issue. So that's today's video. So welcome, this is Just Baron, and in this channel we do just about anything you can do yourself. So RC radio transmitters take your stick position and wirelessly send it to the receiver. This is then converted and used to control servos and motors like in model planes or flight controllers and drones. These receivers output two common standards that I know of, PWM and PPM. Both are similar in that they use pulses to indicate stick position. This video I'll be looking at PWM since I don't have any PPM receivers. I can probably do that in a different video so be sure to subscribe to get notified of future videos. Looking at the signal with an oscilloscope, you can see how by changing the stick position the length of the pulse changes. In reality, it is the time of the pulse that changes, as we are watching voltage against time. The time of the pulse varies from around 1000 microseconds to 2000 microseconds. This I know I can measure with a microcontroller. The next challenge would be to send this to a computer to simulate a game controller. For this I can either use the Arduino Pro Micro or the Arduino Duo. Both support USB and can act as a USB keyboard or mouse. If you don't know anything about Arduino or microcontrollers, you can check out some of my previous videos. I think the Duo would be overkill for this project, so I defaulted to the Pro Micro. I connected the receiver to the Pro Micro like in the diagram. The receiver has a row of pins for signal, power and ground. The pin next to the notch is the signal pin, which we would connect to the GPIO on the Arduino. The center pin is for power and the remaining pin is ground. This is repeated for each channel. I then wrote a code using the Arduino function pulsing to measure the time of each pulse. Printing to the serial window, I can see the time of each pulse changes as I move the stick. You can see here throttle, yaw, pitch and roll. I also have two extra channels. I would link the code in the description below. Next, we need to simulate a game controller. Luckily, M. Hieronymus wrote us a library to simulate a computer joystick that we can take advantage of. Not all heroes wear capes. To install the Arduino library, download the library from GitHub, extract it and add it to the Arduino library directory. Here, I wrote a code that uses the six channels of the radio. I created a throttle, rudder and a thumbstick for pitch and roll. This will be used to control the drone. After uploading, we can go into the PC's control panel, view devices and printers, and we can see the Arduino Leonardo. Right click the game controller, click 
click settings and click properties to test that all the sticks are being recognized. Once this is good, we can head over to our simulator. Opening Liftor, we can head over to Options and click Controls. This may be different depending on your simulator. Click Controller and select the Arduino Leonardo. Then click Calibrate and follow the on-screen instructions to set up the controller. You may need to click Fine Tune to remove some of the stick noise. Save and happy training! I'm using the extra channels for reset and to switch between different flight modes. You can also adjust the response time in the code by changing the update rate. Presently set at 10 milliseconds. Wait, I can make this code better. Now I know some of you are going to argue that pulsing is a blocking function and would cause a lag in the response time of the controller. This is because each time it is called, it has to wait for a pulse or timeout. So using interrupts would be better. So I included a version that uses interrupts. Note, on the Pro Micro, you are limited to only 5 channels since it only has 5 GPIO pins that support interrupts. On the Dew, all pins support interrupts. This diagram shows you how I connected the Pro Micro with the interrupt code. Link to the code in the description below. I didn't notice a difference in the response time, so let me know in the comments below if you do. Lastly, this project wouldn't be complete without packaging. Sadly, I don't have a 3D printer, but I did my best with what I had. I moved everything to a copper board so I don't have these annoying wires. This diagram has a schematic I used. I used some female headers to make a polarizing header that would prevent me from misconnecting the receiver. I used sandpaper to get it down to the right size to fit both receivers. I added two buttons that I can use with the controller and then I added standoffs and put everything in a crayon box I had. Now this project is complete and I have my wireless RC radio receiver to PC controller done. This feels awesome and it really makes the practice more realistic. So everyone, it's very late and as you can see, I still have a lot of hours to put in on this simulator before I even think about going outside with my FPV racing drone. And that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a lot and some of you may decide to build your own um, RC receiver to PC controller. Let me know in the comment section below if you did decide that. Again, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Consider sharing and do consider hitting that subscribe button and leave your comments in the comment section below. And that being said, this is just Baron saying, just do it yourself, just be yourself. That's all anybody could ask of you and see you in the next video.